Previously on Judging Amy. Amy? What's wrong? He left town. David McLaren. You know, I told him if he ever did that running away thing again, we were through. I told him. He did it anyway. I quit. Kyle. There's something we need to talk about. It's not about you, Todd. Well, then what is it about? I'm not sure. Mother, you remember Maxine? Welcome, Mrs. Messina. It's a pleasure to have you. You stay away from my son! Lauren! Lauren Cassidy, where are you? If you are someplace in your pajamas talking on the phone to Victor, I'm not going to be happy! She's out here, not on the phone! And don't slam the door! What are you doing? Practicing. Victor's teaching me some tricks. Oh, really? Is Victor paying your medical bills as well? Chill, Mom. Victor's really good at this. So are his friends. That's great. So you can watch Victor and his friends and stay off the board. I thought you'd want me to do it rather than just watch my boyfriend do it. Being a feminist and all. <laughs> oh, yeah. That, that's really what the suffragettes were fighting for. So that we can break our necks just like the men. You're such a drama queen. Hey, you know what, Lauren? If this is the effect that Victor's having on you, maybe I should have a talk with him this afternoon when he comes to study. He canceled. His dad's coming home. You didn't know that? I thought you guys were tight. Lauren, why don't we all go in and have breakfast? In one minute, Grandma. I want to work on this one move. Cool move, Lauren. Come on. Just a few more times, Grandma. I want to see the look on Victor's face when I could do this in front of him. Hey, a little word of advice, Lauren. When you find yourself literally jumping through hoops to get a boy's attention, you might want to rethink your choices. Well, uh, I'm a very important person, you know. Um, what brings you here? An invitation. Oh. I'd like for you to have dinner with me tomorrow night. Oh. It's my mother's 89th birthday. Oh. Uh, it'll be a family dinner. I mean, you know, there'll be dancing and cake. And, and if you're there, I won't have to kill myself. I'm very flattered, but I'm not sure your mother would want me there. I mean, let's be honest. Last time I saw her, she called me a prostitute. Oh, you understood that? Oh, si, senor. Oh, babe. Look, my mother, my mother, she still wears a prayer veil to church, and she thinks the Pope is a liberal upstart. <laughs> and she's never come to terms with the fact that Franny and I are not going to live blissfully ever after. On the other hand, she does tolerate Brad, and he'll be there. And Brad is? Francesco's boyfriend of over ten years since before we split up. Before you... Mm -hmm. Francesca was having an affair? Uh, yes. Is that why your marriage ended? Uh, I wanted a more authentic life, and she wanted a soul-sucking lawyer with a private jet. <laughs> so I got a truck, she got Brad, and everybody's happy. Except your mother. Except my mother. <laughs> yes, look, I know she's no day at the beach, but she is my mother. And... I want her to get to know you. It's important to me. Well, when you put it like that. <laughs> uh, Pablo Neruda? Oh, the, the one we talked mm -hmm. about. Just to uh, read the tear stained ones, those are the best. <laughs> everyone. This is 
is a sentencing hearing on Travis Cooper, who is in contempt of violating a court order. Uh, Mr. Sherman, would you like to get us started? Yes, Your Honor. Travis Cooper has run away from home twice in the last six months to literally join the circus, the bouncing kumquat circus to be exact. The bouncing kumquats? It's a small family-owned circus that travels the eastern seaboard and parts of the Midwest. Travis stowed away with them when they were playing Hartford six months ago. He even talked his way into one of the acts. Which one? Uh, he was, I believe, a tightrope walker. <laughs> so the bouncing kumquats just let people walk off the street and walk onto a tightrope? Well, according to the circus's owner, Travis is an accomplished gymnast and showed great promise as an acrobat and tightrope walker. Regardless, the owner did the responsible thing and alerted the police who brought Travis home. And that's when he was put under court supervision? Yes, Your Honor. A month later, the police found him in New Haven, once again in the company of the bouncing kumquats. It was at that time that he was taken into custody. And, and Travis admitted to running both times? Yes, Your Honor. The state is asking that Travis be committed to the Department of Children and Families for placement in a residential setting. Got it. Thank you. And you? I'm Marlo Rosen. I was retained by Travis's parents, Tom and Nala Cooper. They love their son and desperately want to bring him home, where they can deal with this situation as a family. Well, presumably they've tried that and it has failed. They're asking for more time. This is a family of means, Your Honor. There's no need to involve the state or use public funds to care for Travis. Well, I appreciate your concern over the state's budget, Miss Rosen, but uh, I am playing catch up with this file, and so uh, why don't you all come back here when, Mr. Van Exel? This afternoon at 4 o'clock. This afternoon at 4 p.m. And now, uh, Marshal, you may escort Travis back to detention. Thank you. The coffee's still good? Well, that presupposes that it was ever good. So the Sally Hartzell case is finally going to court, huh? Yes, end of the week. It's been a long eight months. That guy ever confess? No, therefore Sally will have to testify and relive the attack. But at least they caught him. After everything she went through with her stepdad, to turn around and be molested by a total stranger in her nice new middle-class foster neighborhood. I thought she was finally safe. Perverts can spot the weakened ones. But Sally is stronger than this man bargained for, and she's going to put him away. Maxine, what are you going to get Isabel for her birthday? Well, I'm going to the parties, Courtney's day, and I want to get something special. You know, make a good impression. Courtney says if Isabella doesn't like it, you're dead meat. I am already dead meat. And I doubt that anything gift-wrapped will turn the tide. Well, that's the spirit. You won't mind if I don't allow myself to be seen with you at the party, right? We have a nice family. Ask anyone. We have a nice house. Travis goes to a wonderful school. I don't know why he would want to leave. Mrs. Cooper, who disciplines Travis at home? Well, we both do, but we're not overly strict. Honestly, he's never been in any trouble to speak of until the last year or so. What changed? Well, he started junior high and became more withdrawn. He doesn't share as much with us about his day. But he's 13. We figured it was part of growing up. Were you supportive of Travis' interest in gymnastics? I drove him to lessons twice a week for the past three years. Tom and I thought it was important for him to have a physical activity, and he never really took to team sports like basketball or football. Not that we cared. We were proud of his accomplishments at gymnastics. But when he started running away, we stopped the lessons. He'd obviously taken it to an extreme. Didn't stop him from running away the next time, did it? If he would just talk to us. I don't know why you won't talk to us anymore. Objection, Your Honor. Sustained. And we have always been such a close family, and I want that back. Have you tried family counseling? I suggested it, but my husband feels that a person should be able to solve his problems on his own. We feel we can do that. Just don't take him away. Give us another chance to be a family. Thank you, Pam. Sally will be home any minute now. 
Heather's mom was in charge of carpool today, and she's a very cautious driver. It's better than the alternative. <laughs> Heather was one of the girls involved in the attack, wasn't she? Heather and Wendy. They've both been such good friends to Sally. And at first, I worried about their influence on her. To fit in so badly. And they're both so wealthy and privileged. But since the attack, they've really been there for her. Hi, honey. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mrs. Gray. Did you come here to check on me? Oh, well, I wanted to make sure you're feeling all right, see if you have any questions about tomorrow. My lawyer explained it to me. You understand. The man you are testifying against will be in the courtroom. I know. But as soon as I tell my story, I can leave, right? I don't have to sit there with him. You'll be escorted out as soon as you finish down the witness stand. No one should have to tell this story twice in one lifetime, much less live through it. I'm very proud of you. Thank you, Mrs. Gray. We are now boarding flight 2117 to Boston. We are now boarding flight 2117 to Boston. Boston, Charleston, Charlotte, Charlotte, Charlotte. How many flights to Charlotte do we really need? Well, one more, hopefully. Leaving in the next 20 minutes. Uh, you're out of luck. Next one's out at 7.30. <sighs> Not gonna cut it. Time I take a flight, wait in line for a cab, drive to the ball field, I'll miss the game. What game? Canapolis Intimidators against the Delmarva Shorebirds. Baseball. Single A. I plan on seeing every single A team play before I die. Not dying. I just, I like baseball. So your flight delayed because of the fog at O'Hare? Yours was delayed? Mine was canceled. I don't have to be anywhere. That tickets to nowhere in particular? Uh, it's to Chicago, but I don't really need to go there. So what are you gonna just throw a dart? Something like that. Quit my job a week ago, I figured I should do something other than sitting on my couch eating Cheetos. Oh man, I envy you. Oh, I could go to Greensboro tonight and see the Bats play the Hickory Crawdads tomorrow night. Assuming there's still tickets. All right. Well, I, I wouldn't assume that. I mean, the Bats and the Crawdads? Huge grudge match. Stop! Yeah. Hey, ma'am. Did you hit your head? Yeah. Okay. Sure keep your neck still. Follow my finger with your eyes. I'm a cop. I'm a cop. Okay, you're gonna be okay. The EMTs will be here in a second. I'm a cop. I'm a cop. Stay still. You're gonna be okay. My parents always told me I could be anything I wanted, as long as I worked hard at it, dedicated myself to it, like John William Cooper. Who's he? My great grandfather. All my life, I've heard stories about how he quit school in the eighth grade to support the family. He learned how to make furniture and became a millionaire. Is that your plan? To get rich as a circus performer? I want to work for Cirque du Soleil. Have you seen them? They're from Canada. They're fantastic. Yeah, they are. Hope you're not planning a trip to Canada, though. You're already in a lot of trouble. I have a small window of opportunity to be an acrobat, and I want to make the most of my time. I'm good at this. They help make me good at this, and now they want me to quit. I, I think they just want you to stay home and go to school and be a normal kid. Well, that's never going to happen. At least in the circus, I... What, Travis? Nothing. Look, if I have to, I'll do what that actor kid did. And when he sued his parents so he could live by himself. If you're talking about becoming an emancipated minor, you, you have to be at least 15. I can't wait that long. I know what I want to do. I want to be in the circus, so just let me do it, okay? It's the best thing. Best for who? I'm going to keep running away. I mean it. They can drag me back, but I'll run away again. I'd like to talk to Travis and the attorneys in my chambers, please. Why? Because right now, it's the best thing. Travis, I need you to answer that last question for me. Which one? You said, in the circus, I could... What? 
I don't know. I think you do. I think you just don't want to say in front of your parents. Travis, it's my job to do what's best for you. Not your parents, not the police. You. So, in the circus, you could... What? Feel normal. You don't feel normal? I'm not normal. I'm smarter than all the kids at my school, but I'm not a computer nerd. I'm a good athlete, but not at the sports that make you popular. I don't get girls. Well, you're just 13, so young to be dating. No. I don't get them. I mean, what's the big deal? It's all the boys at school talk about, and I just don't get it. Well, I think you're running away from an uncomfortable part of life. I mean, God knows, we'd all like to skip puberty, but you can't. I could do it somewhere else. On the road with people who don't know you well? Yeah. I can be myself with them because they don't know me any other way. Unlike your family. I love my parents. But they're not going to like me much when I grow up. Your parents have lived lives. They, they, might, they might surprise you if you give them a chance. But they need all the information. You need to tell them what you're actually afraid of. I can't. I don't even know. You have to answer more questions? You kidding me, man? These are the feds. I could be here for days. Kyle McCarty. Buck Costello. Really? Buck? Are you an Italian cowboy? Yeehaw. <laughs> so, what, uh, you're, you're a doctor? That's what you quit? ER, second year residency. And you're obviously a cop, even though you don't look like one. Uh, strike team. Undercover. Long term surveillance. Well, you win the cool contest. What are you working on now? Salvaging any part of my trip. I can't believe I'm gonna spend my off time in freaking airport security. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How long you been a cop? Six years. I lived in my whole life, though. My dad was a cop, brothers are cops. And you decided to do it anyway? Oh, hell yeah, man, I love it. What, what is it exactly that you, you love about it? You never know what's gonna happen. Yeah, hanging with the guys. That's mainly what surveillance is, by the way. And you get to see the city in a way that most people never do. Change your perspective is not a bad thing. You ever want to go on a ride along? I could set it up. Seriously? Yeah, absolutely. Give me a call. I'm at the Farmington Avenue station. That's my number. Cool. Oh, well, good luck getting tickets to the game tonight. Hope the lobsters win. Grow it, Ed. Ah, as long as a crustacean comes out on top, I'm happy. You ever decide where you're going to go? Home. I was walking home with Heather and Wendy. We decided to take a shortcut through Reynolds Park. This man came up to us and asked if we had any money. We said no, and he grabbed my arm, and he said he'd take me instead. Sally. Is the man who grabbed you in the courtroom today? Yes, that's him. Let the record show that the witness has identified the defendant. And what happened after he grabbed you? Dragged me into the woods. He pulled my pants down and he stuck his fingers at me. He said for me to stay quiet and it would be over soon. And was it? Yes. He let me up and told me that he loved me. 
And he told me not to tell anybody or he'd come in my room and hurt me again. But you did tell someone, didn't you? We told my foster mom as soon as we got home. She was worried because we were late. She called the police. Thank you, Sally. Nothing further, Your Honor. Would you go have a drink with me and talk? No. No, you won't talk to me? David? Yeah. I told you if you ever did that again that we were done, and you did it again. Don't even pretend you didn't. Things got a little intimate, and then you up and went to, uh, to Texas? I had to depose all... a guy that we were trying to extradite from there. And, and you had to do it the day after we spent the night together. Got the crap, David. You ran away from me again. Look, I, I know what I did. It would have been a lot easier for me to stay here and not have you angry with me right now. But would you just let me have the chance? I can't. Look, David, I'm sorry for all the horrible things that have happened to you, but I, I cannot put myself through any more of this. Excuse me. There won't be any more of this. You said that before. I know, but things are different. <laughs> I know you believe that. I, I know you think you can control this, but I don't think you can. It's not even about you anymore. It's about how I'm going to allow myself to be treated in a relationship. I'm, I'm a mother. I'm, I'm a role model. I cannot tell my daughter that it is all right for somebody to treat her like this. Amy. David. I, I, David. We're done. Pat and Mick got themselves a new job at the sawmill. And one morning before tea, Pat comes up to Mick and says, Mick, I just lost my finger. Really, says Pat. And how did you do that? Well, I just went up to this big spinning thing here and I touched it like this. Damn! I just lost another one. <laughs> <laughs> it's Maxine! Go on. And, and, and everyone. I'm so glad you agreed to come. We all know how well it can be. But I was thrilled to be invited and I'm happy to be here to celebrate her life. Please, Mrs. Gray, no need to pretend with us. This is Brad Vickers, Maxine Gray. Nice to meet you, Brad. Oh, uh, Isabel's pet name for me is Juan El Bobo. John the Stupid? Dummy. It's a better translation. I graduated Yale Law School, so it just rolls off my back. <laughs> so, where's Mama? Changing into the dress that Brad and I bought for her. Sean and I have something amazing for her. Better not be a widescreen TV. You knew I was getting that. Oh, please. Electronics are so alienating. All right, enough, you two. Come on. I'm certain Mrs. Messina will appreciate the thought that everyone has put into the gift they chose for her. Ignacio, <clears throat> she's perfect for you. Cállense y veanme. Oh. Estás guapísima, Isabel. The color's perfect, abuelita. Happy birthday, mamá. You still drive a truck? Yes, I still drive a truck. Is that for me? Yes. Thank you for the restraint you're about to show. Happy birthday, Mrs. Messina. Happy birthday, Mama. Gather around, everyone. I have a present for Abuelita. Sean, please. Uh, Mrs. Messina, uh, Courtney has told me how important you are in her life, and we wanted to give you something special for your birthday. So, here it is. Our gift to you, the gift of a song. town is sleeping now the time has come to part 
the time for weeping. Vaya con Dios, my darling. Oh, boy. He's telling an 89 year old woman to go with God. Happy birthday. You think I'm just an old coat hanging in your closet. Well, that shows how much you know. There's a constant stream of men in and out of here, day and night. I can't get them out of my hair. See? There's another one. Uh, uh, sure. Cutler and I go into the bedroom. Or... Hey, Ma, is that you? Oh, yes. Good night. Come on in. Come in. <sighs> Have a good time? No, dear. Was she mean to you again? She was, uh, who she is. Sorry. What did Ignacio do? Ignacio did what he does. He yelled at her very quickly in Spanish and told me not to take it personally. It's personal. Oh, she's 89 years old. Amy, she's <clears throat> set in her ways. I can take the high road. Well, once she figures out how Ignacio feels about you, she's going to change her tune. I know a little bit about tough moms. They have a big bark, but in the end, they just want their kids to be happy. That's not true at all. But thank you. You're welcome. Did, um, did, uh, what's the name, David get back today? Yeah. Did you talk to him? Mm-hmm. And? Are we okay? Go to bed. Me too. Come on, Lauren, get in the car! I'm down here, Mom. Oh, hey, hey, Victor. Oh, hi, Mr. Square. Well, you're a long way from home, aren't you? He had his carpool drop him off. He's hitching with us. If it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Why? He just needs a ride, Mom. N no, he actually had a ride. He went out of his way to stop by here. And I I'm just wondering if there's a reason, other than wanting to see you for an extra 15 minutes. Elle wanted me here to help her ask you. Ask me what? Nothing. Uh, let's go to school. We can talk in the car. No, we can talk here. What do you want to ask me, Victor? Can Elle come to the skate park with me this afternoon? I would mainly just be watching Honest Mom. The kids there are, like, so good at it. Victor's, like, amazing. Yeah, yeah, I've heard. Please, Miss Gray, all of our friends go and it's a lot of fun. And I promise not to teach her anything too dangerous. And they even have adults who supervise and a first aid station right next to the place where you skate. What does that tell you? If you break your arm, I swear to God, I'm going to break the other one. And then I'm going to come looking for you. I can respect that. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. By law, I have two choices. Send Travis Cooper to a juvenile facility or send him back to the same situation he was in. Well, neither one is very satisfactory in this case. I think you have an exceptional son. Part of that is your doing, and uh, part of that is who he was born to be. But we can't pretend he's a run-of-the-mill kid. He's not. He's bright, he's sensitive, he's talented, he's hardworking. So, we have to figure out how to keep this boy out of jail. Personally, I think you should let him join the circus. With one or both of you as a chaperone, but let him go. Do some research. See if Cirque du Soleil has an internship program. Or carve out a schedule with the kumquats and let him be homeschooled on the road. But 
embrace his uniqueness. Most kids like Travis have no choice but to endure junior high and high school. But he has you two. And I have great faith that you will rise to the challenge of, of parenting this special kid. Now, I can't force you to let Travis walk on a tightrope, but I can force you into some family counseling. And obviously, there is an emotional component to Travis's problems. So, Mrs. Cooper, here's your chance to work things out as a family with some help. And Travis, give them a chance. Okay. 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 So I'll see everyone back here in three months and we'll see how it goes. Thank you. Judge Gray. Yeah. What's wrong? I was at the ER. There was an accident at the skate park. Oh my God. A car was driving too fast in the parking lot. Was she hit? No, but Victor was. Lauren, where's Victor? Is he back here? He's in surgery. They won't tell me anything. They said they can only tell you. Lauren, what happened? These guys were, were speeding in the parking lot. And I hit him. I didn't see it. I just heard the brake squeal. Excuse me, excuse me. I have a 12 year old son who was hit by a car. Can you tell me where he is? They took him to surgery. We're here. Someone will be able to talk to you. You know what kind of shape he's in? That's as much as I know. I have to tend to this patient. David? I'm going to call Kyle. These doctors will never tell anything to mere mortals. Hey, Kyle. Kyle, it's me. Can you pick up? It's an emergency. Hi, 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 hi. It's me. Um, I need help. Do you have any idea what you've been through? Not much, according to her friends. <laughs> they said that three of them lied about the attack so they wouldn't get in trouble for going to the mall after school. <laughs> How do you know these girls aren't lying now? They have receipts which place them at the mall at the time of the alleged attack. <laughs> but may I please have a word with her? Not until she's been processed. Don't worry, don't worry, honey. I'll, I'll be right behind you. I'll be right behind you. Hey, Peter, did she go to sleep? Good. Uh, no, we're still waiting. Okay, I will. Yeah, I love you too. Bye. That's Lauren. She's good. Peter says she's almost asleep. Do you want me to call Victor's grandmother? No, I don't want to scare her, you know, until we know something. What? He was out of surgery. They had to take him back. His, his blood pressure began to bottom out, and they think it's an abdominal hemorrhage, possibly a rupture. What does that mean? He still has internal bleeding. They haven't figured out where it's coming from. What do you mean they haven't figured it out? Don't they have some way to figure that out? They're, They're working on that. Look, I did some checking. The two surgeons you have in there with him are top notch. One of them is ahead of the trauma team and pediatric surgery. You got lucky. He was on his way out the door, but they you caught him in time. Lucky. I'm sorry, that was a bad choice of words. Kyle, just just tell us the truth. Is he out of the woods? Look, he's got great doctors. And they are doing everything they can. Look, she asked you a yes or a no question. What is it with you people and your, your hedging and your euphemisms? That's my son in there. I have a right to know the truth. Look at my, my best educated guess. I'd say 70-30. That'll make it. 
No. David, I'm not a religious person, but I cannot imagine a God that would take Victor from you. I can. Then why are we here? I'm not really sure how this works. I just light a candle on behalf of somebody. Yeah, that's the idea. Here. It's for a boy named Victor. If you need to know. He was hit by a car. I'll add Victor to my prayers. Because of you, an innocent man spent six months in jail. I see the man in the park every day. He's always looking through trash cans for food. He sleeps on a bench. I thought he'd be better off in jail. At least it'd be warm and they'd feed him. Sally, that was not your decision to make. You took a man's freedom because you wouldn't tell your foster mother you were at the mall. I didn't want to tell you this because I didn't want you to take me away from her. But you have no idea what she does to me. Who? Pam? What does she do to you? Hits me everywhere but the face. That way no one ever knows. You're telling me your foster mother beats you? She does. It's more than that. She burns my legs with cigarettes. Sally, these are very disturbing accusations. Sometimes she holds me down on the bed, pulls my pants down, and sticks her fingers in me. And she tells me not to tell anybody, or she'll come in my room and hurt me again. Sally, <laughs> stop. Stop. Those things were done to you when you were five years old. I removed you from your mother and your stepfather because I believe those things were done to you. I do, I do not believe that Pam Morton has abused you. You were there. What are you talking about? When she held me down one time, I remember you were there. You knew. No. You watched her put things inside me and you wouldn't do anything about it. And Sally, I will get you. I will get you the help you need. You were there, Mrs. Gray. You let this happen.
It's okay. What does that mean? He's gonna be okay. <laughs> they found the bleeding and stopped it. His blood pressure's back to normal. He has a concussion, but they're watching that, and they had to remove his spleen, but it's... It's not a big deal. I can go through all of it with you. He's already allergic to peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> it's about the same amount of seriousness. I mean, you're going to be careful about certain things, but he'll most likely die of something else, hopefully old age. Thank you. Thank you so much. No problem. Oh. Uh, listen, I'm sorry about before. I understand. When can I see him? Soon. I'll be back. <laughs> Thank God, huh? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God. I should go home. See about my kids. Thanks for staying with me. David, I'm happy to be your friend. We both know that ship sailed. There is no other ship. He's okay, honey. He's gonna be. Stay tuned for scenes from our next episode.